The third question, therefore, is whether this prorogation did have the effect of frustrating or preventing the ability of Parliament to carry out its constitutional functions without reasonable justification. This was not a normal prorogation in the run-up to a Queen's speech. It prevented Parliament from carrying out its constitutional role for five out of the possible eight weeks between the end of the summer recess and exit day on the 31st of October. Proroguing Parliament is quite different from Parliament going into recess. While Parliament is prorogued, neither House can meet, debate or pass legislation. Neither House can debate government policy. Nor may members ask written or oral questions of ministers or meet and take evidence in committees. In general, bills which have not yet completed all their stages are lost and will have to start again from scratch after the Queen's speech. During a recess, on the other hand, the House does not sit, but parliamentary business can otherwise continue as usual. This prolonged suspension of parliamentary democracy took place in quite exceptional circumstances. The fundamental change which was due to take place in the Constitution of the United Kingdom on the 31st of October. Parliament, and in particular the House of Commons, as the elected representatives of the people, has a right to a voice in how that change comes about. The effect on the fundamentals of our democracy was extreme. Was a, quote, proceeding in Parliament, end quote, which, under the Bill of Rights, it is for Parliament, and in particular the Speaker and the Lord Speaker, to decide what to do next. Unless there is some parliamentary rule of which we are unaware, they can take immediate steps to enable each House to meet as soon as possible. It is not clear to us that any step is needed from the Prime Minister, but if it is, the Court is pleased that his counsel have told the Court that he will take all necessary steps to comply with the terms of any declaration made by this court. It follows that the Advocate General's appeal in the case of Cherry is dismissed and Mrs Miller's appeal is allowed. The same declarations and orders should be made in each case. Copies of our full judgment explaining these conclusions and a transcript of this summary will be available immediately after the court rises, and I urge you all to read them with care. The court will now adjourn.